Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Today, I'm going to be taking a deep dive into the complex world of cyber security, a field that is integral to business operations, as it is integral. And from devastating financial losses to deliberating operational hiccups, the aftermath of a cyber attack underscores the necessity of awareness and preparedness throughout an organisation. And it's not just about financial loss. I was recently reading that the reputational damage can last up to five years. So to navigate this labyrinth of cyber threats and solutions, who better to have at our side than a seasoned expert? And today, Ed Williams, Vice President of Consulting and Professional Services at Trustwave, is going to be joining us on the show. And Trustwave is a globally recognised security leader in managed security services and managed detection and response. So Ed is going to be joining me today to dispel the complexities of cyber security and offer a bit of advice to help guide CISOs in effectively communicating these issues to their organisations. And he's going to be sharing his top tips as he aims to arm CISOs with the right blend of words and tactics to address cybersecurity directly with the C-suite in an effective manner. And yes, that means talking about it in a language everyone can understand, maybe thinking about ditching those acronyms. So get ready as we prepare to demystify cybersecurity jargon, prioritise security topics and embark on a journey of regular updates, aligning security strategies with organisations' risks, and also how to identify the most pertinent cybersecurity metrics for the board and engage in meaningful two-way interactions. How does that sound? Well, buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Wales, where Ed is waiting to share his story and share some invaluable insights. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? So yeah, hi everybody. Um, my name is Ed Williams. I'm currently the VP of uh, Continual Professional Services. Prior to that, I was a pen tester for about twenty years, and I always tell people I pen tested things from rockets to submarines and everything in between. So I've I've seen it all, um, some good, some bad, and some indifferent. So I've been around the block a few times. Love that. There seems to be a lot to unpack there, from rockets to submarines. So if I was to ask you about your origin story. Can you tell me a little bit more about your journey into the cybersecurity field and how you, you came to be the VP of Consulting and Professional Services at Trust at Trustwave? Because I feel there's a story there. Uh, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Um, so yeah. I, I did my degree. I did um, computer science at university. Then I was fortunate enough to get some funding to do an MSc, um, a master's in information security. Then I went traveling around the world for a couple of years. I did a Bollywood film, um, did some other stuff, did some scuba diving. And I came back then to the UK and I sort of started my career proper. I was a Unix admin for a couple of years, um, trying to secure our environments. We had a pen test come in. The guy did a really good job, tore the environment to bits. And I thought, right, I want to do that. And then fast forward 15 years, I was a principal security consultant doing pen testing day in, day out. Mainly um, gov work and financial services, which is where I did all the submarines and rockets and things. Um, tested some cool things in banks as well. But then saw an opportunity with Trustwave to be the director, the EMEA director of pen testing. Did that and then got a promotion then last year, I think it was, to the VP. So here I am. Now, I've got to back up a little bit there. I nearly had to interrupt you because you nonchalantly uh, dropped in. I did a Bollywood film. So <laughs> you got to talk me about that. Uh, so it was quite literally walking down the road in Mumbai, and it sounds way more dodgy than what it was. It was a different time as well. It was 2002, 2003. Um, a guy goes, you, you know, you're Western. Do you want to be in a Bollywood film? Fast forward 24 hours. There we were. We did we did a bank heist in, the, in, a, in a South African bank. I was in. I was one of the tellers in the background. Brilliant. Oh, do you have a copy of that film still? It's on the internet. I do. You know what the the funny thing is, it is described as one of the worst. Oh, still to cinema. That's what it's described as. <laughs> oh, man. There's so much has changed in the world of technology and cybersecurity recently. And I was reading about one of your opinions about why it's so important for the CISO to be effective in communicating cybersecurity risks and solutions to the rest of the organization, particularly the C-suite, who are 
got a bit of a history of not always seeing value in uh, cybersecurity projects. So can you expand on that? Yeah, so th- this is a sort of something I'm very passionate about, actually. So having been a pen tester for 15, 20 years, it's very difficult to get those technical risks up to the CISO and then up to the C-suite. It's, you know, what we deal in is jargon and things that translate that don't translate particularly well. So it's really, really difficult and something that I think the industry hasn't done particularly well since its inception, really, computer security, in getting through to the CISO and then making that journey then from the CISO up to the C-suite so they can understand, you know, what's the impact, what's the risk, all those things that we know are important. But getting them to understand in the language that they can understand is really important. And whether that's metrics or return on investment or whatever it might be, because ultimately the C-suite are capital allocators, so they need to know that the capital that they're allocating to the business or to that part of the business is being effective, and you know that's that's what they do. So it's it's very very important, and it's something that I that I see we as an industry don't do particularly well. And that's one of the reasons I invited you on the podcast today. I think there's a few synergies between you and I because one of the reasons I first started this show was I've been in, I've been the IT guy in those meetings with stakeholders from all around the business. As soon as they start hiding behind acronyms and you see everybody in the rooms thinking about what they want to eat for tea, etc. So one of the things that put you on my radar is you said that CISO should ditch the acronyms and speak in a language better understood by the C-suite. So can you elaborate on that point and maybe share a few examples of how to do that effectively? Yeah, absolutely. D- ditching the acronyms is very important. We jargon is, you know, when I'm, when I'm writing Pendus reports and when I see Pendus reports, they're full of jargon full of things that are just really difficult to get into and to get over. So the, the key thing really is to break it down into a language that is easy to understand. You know, what is this? How is it going to affect my business? How can we fix it easily? And you know, what's that going to cost me? That's ultimately what the question we get from the C-suite. Um, and should we, should we get it fixed? So the key message, well, when I'm getting my team to write reports, is to make sure, okay, you know, we do need that technical information so things can get fixed. But it's having a section, whether it's the executive summary or some other part of the report, that is based in risk and return on investment to return on capital employed, whatever it might be, whatever your chosen metric is, and to make sure then that the C-suite can understand that. Because I, th- I think sometimes we fall into the category of, oh, the C-suite, they're stupid, they don't know what they're talking about. Mm. Oh, that's not true. That you know, they, of course, they know what they're talking about, but they've got different interests. So it's really important to align those interests. Yeah, you know, and everybody wants the good, you know, the organisation to be secure. So making sure that they understand where you're coming from, getting some sort of KPI, some sort of metric wrapped around it, so they can see very quickly. Oh, right, okay, we're getting better in terms of our patching or in terms of our password policies, whatever it might be. And then you can demonstrate then that if we don't get better. The impact is going to be, you know, we're going to lose X amount from our bottom line or the share price is going to do X, Y, Z. And we've got all that history, all those metrics we can draw upon. So really making sure that the language isn't this sort of impenetrable, you know, IP, IPv6, all these weird things that we care about, but a lot of the CISO people don't care about. I know it's, I appreciate this is a pretty big question, but is there anything CISOs can better do to identify and prioritize the security topics that those higher level executives need to understand and, and maybe share any general topics that are typically relevant across most organizations in every industry? So that's a really good question. I've seen, certainly over the last five years, a big shift in CISOs being better at their job, asking better questions of us as you know, sort of technical people. Um, and that's really important because once they understand what they're asking for, then that's a better conversation because you know we need to be working in partnership. When we do lots of pen testing with an organization, the maturity goes up pretty quickly because we're all working together, we're all pulling together in the same direction. And that's important. So they can say they can come back to us and say, oh, actually, we don't quite understand what that is. And being a trusted, I don't like the expression trusted partner, trusted advisor. That's what we are, is they come to us and say, right, don't quite understand this. What does that mean? Uh, we can relay that information and they understand it. And once they understand it, they can pass that information up to the board. And I've, what I've seen work really well is having somebody like myself, somebody who's senior in an organization, present to the board or help create a set of decks or a set of slides that the CISO can use to present to the board. Because sometimes there's a bit of, can't see the wood for the trees in terms of the CISO, whereas 
you know, I've got visibility on my peers across you know all the pen testing that we perform. So we can say, well, you're doing this really well against your peers, and you're not doing this really well. The, again, they go back to the risk of not doing really well is this, or the impact is this, and that's something that they can understand. And then we move along. And then you know, th- this is probably what you're going to need to spend, and don't get too focused on some sort of new tech because there's also thing as a silver bullet in terms of security. It's really about getting the basics right. And once you get over that sort of period, then you can start to see some sort of maturity. And I think another area that people often forget is the importance of collaboration and communication. So can you discuss the importance of regular updates, two-way interactions with the C-suite, et cetera, especially around the context of cybersecurity and how these little areas really can improve an organization's overall cybersecurity posture? Uh, Absolutely. I I think the real fundamental thing, I think we've lost this recently as well, is security, uh, cyber, whatever you want to call it, is an enabler for a business. It allows them to do things that they wouldn't normally be allowed to do. Like, you know, we're communicating over over Zoom like this. We couldn't do that if it wasn't a secure channel. So that that is a really important lens to look through. Once you realise that, having regular conversation, like, you know, we present at boards every quarter, I don't think that's often enough. I think it needs to be far, you know, security is very dynamic. It changes all the time, uh, daily, in fact. Just really important to have a regular stream of information back and forth. And it might just be, there's no update this week, Mm -hmm. or there's XYZ is happening within this sort of realm. We need to be aware of it. We need to keep an eye on it. We'll update you next week. So it's really, really important to have those channels uh, open and not just, oh, I've got a board meeting in three weeks, I'll present at that point, because so much can change within that week. It's such a dynamic environment. And once you start to look through the lens of, we do security to enable the business, not to suck a huge amount of money and time from from the C-suite, but to actually be a better organization, then you can start to see, okay, we need to open our uh, lines of communication. And, and the board then become receptive, because they can understand, oh, actually, this is, this is trying to help us. It's not a blocker, it's an enabler, and that is really, really key. I'm curious, are you noticing a difference in attitudes from the C-suite now? There's been a lot of talk around that, but are you seeing that, especially in a world where, you know, economic crisis, et cetera, and every business, well, every tech project's got the close scrutiny for what value does it offer, what ROI does it offer? Do the C-suite get it now? They, oh, they do. So I think, as I mentioned, the CISOs are becoming far more mature in the way they ask us in terms of sort of technicians, and that then gets translated up. I, I think as well, you know, we see regularly um, acts and data dumps and data breaches on the BBC. So it's it's common lingo, you know, it's, it's, it's not, uh, oh gosh, that doesn't happen to us. It happens to everybody, and that, that's a fact of life. So I would definitely say there's a maturity. There's still a lot of work to be done, I think, from our side in removing all that fluff and hot hot air and nobody really cares about apart from you know technical people and not the, t- the capital allocators which is really really important if if i you know if i'm working with a client and he needs more money to do something well he's got to demonstrate how he's going to use that money and how he's going to use that for the betterment of the business so just putting it in a slightly different again looking at a different lens not just security 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 but more of a business angle and that's really important and how did, would you say understanding an organization's risk can help shape the security strategy as a whole? And again, is there any advice for CISOs that might be listening, struggling to align their strategy with their organization's, organization's risk tolerance? Is any advice you can leave there to? Oh, yeah. The, the first thing is to work, again, we use this um, expression, trusted advisor. I, I don't think anybody likes it. But that's yeah. the thing that we've got. Work with you. I'll use pen testing as what I'm most familiar with. Work with your pen test provider around not just one-off pen tests, but how do you shape a program of pen testing? Like we, we know from experience, most most organisations are performing a fair amount of pen tests, and what that actually means different per organisation. Mm. But work with them to to shape that program. You know, are we concentrating on the right areas? Because you know we are the experts. We've got, for example, in trust with over 150 full-time pen testers. So this is something we do day in, day out. So we know what good looks like. We know what bad looks like. We know what a good program looks like and a good program management. So work with us or work with your provider to shape that. And you will very quickly gain a level of maturity that makes you a difficult nut to crack. 
And of course, every mantra in every business and IT department is if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. So what are the most useful cybersecurity metrics, would you say, or to deliver the these kind of messages to the board? And how should a CISO decide which metrics to focus on? Yeah, no, again, that's a really good question. And I think those metrics will change over time as well, yeah. specifically as your maturity improves. But I think, you know, I, I've been in this game a long time and I've seen lots and lots of organizations get compromised. And a lot of it boils down to the basics. I call it patching, passwords, and policy. You can probably add people into that as well. Yeah. It's really, really important to get those, sort of get your arms around that. Patching is notoriously difficult, especially large, complex, heterogeneous environments. Very, very difficult. So trying to get your arms around that, get a KPI on that. How are we doing in terms of patching? Are we fixing critical issues, for example, within seven days or six days or whatever is decided? So you can measure that. Once you can measure that, then you move on to passwords. You know, what's our password policy like? Is it robust? Are people still selecting weak passwords? And all of these things, we have the technology and the tools to actually you know, dig into this to see what, what is or isn't in terms of a good password. Getting your arms around those, and I think those are easy things that a board can understand. You know, they know that patching is important, as again we see it all the time. They know that passwords are important because that's how organisations get compromised. Having good policies in place, so making sure that that RDP server isn't deployed on the internet when somebody's just spun something up and forgotten to take it down. All of those things are really important, and you can put benchmarks and KPIs around that. That is really good then, and you can track those things over time. Are you getting better? Are you getting worse? Once then you've got that in place, and that almost becomes a, a BAU, a business as usual type endeavor, then you can look on to you know, logging, um, what are people doing, are they clicking on things, phishing type examples. Then you can sort of get a bit more maturity around your KPIs. And that then increases your maturity and, and really makes the business ask the right types of questions. That's what you need to do is to say, right, we've, we've got those basics done, what's next? our email gateway, can we do something around that? Why do we need to do an email gateway? Because we're getting all these threats coming in via email and we know that ransomware probably starts via something like that. Okay, the board then can sort of say, right, we can allocate X amount to that and we know that I'm going to get a return on investment in terms of our security for that piece of work. So you can really quickly get a good level of maturity. And as we said at the very beginning of our conversation, this, the C-suite are not fools. They do have a better understanding and better knowledge now, but they do have different motivations, different interests. So to bring them on board, I think talking in a language everyone can understand, removing acronyms, all make great sense, but you don't want to patronise them, and equally, you don't want to take too much for granted. So how can CISOs effectively test the C-suite on their understanding of cybersecurity issues and their potential impacts? And maybe share a few strategies or methods you found to be successful in this regard, because it is a, a, a very fine balance, isn't it? Well, that is an absolutely great question. And we've we've done a few different things. We've we've done some dark web searches specifically against C suite. We've been allowed to do that. And some of the information that comes back is is very private to, to those individuals. So very quickly they can see the importance of having, you know, good operational security for themselves and then that transpires that they need to do that for the business as well. So that is one, maybe maybe a little aggressive in that way. Um Constant communication is, is absolutely essential. It sounds really straightforward, um, but we do see organizations say, oh, we've got this quarterly review. Well, it needs to be done more often than that because security moves so quickly that you really need to get an understanding of what are the threats that are happening this week, next week, and how do they impact me? So there's a couple of different things, constant on the individual and then the business as well. You know, If we get compromised by the latest variant of ransomware, this is going to you know, cause X, Y, Z damage. So understanding what the impact is. You know, we won't be able to deliver our service. Um, if you're a bank, some of our clients will get very upset. You know, once you put it in that type of language, clients and services, that they can understand. You know, again, they don't care about certain technical things. They care about what are the outcomes. And we can control what the outcomes are by giving them good data. And also, I think the world of technological change and cyber risks are moving at breakneck speed, but there's also a realisation that it might never move this slow again. And as a result, there's a real pressure on each and every one of us to be in a state of continuous learning. So someone right in the heart of this space, I've got to ask, how or where do you self-educate to keep 
up to speed with the latest trend? Oh, it's really difficult, and you've got to be really on top of it. Um, Twitter is really good. If you think about AI, what's just happened in the last mm. three months, I guess, it's gone bananas, absolutely yeah. bananas. You know, making sure that you're up to date with chat GPT or BARD or whatever the latest one is, is really difficult. Twitter is is a fantastic resource. You've got to be really careful who you listen to. Make sure your list is curated and people you trust. That's important. Again, you know, understanding, having the basics. You know, I, I was in university, well, over 20 years ago, and we did neural networks back then. So I've got quite a good understanding already of what you know, machine learning and AI is all about. And it's unbelievable at the time. I hated that that module. It was really hard. It's a hard work. Uh, but now already I'm, you know, I feel like I'm I'm enabled and good to go on that. So constantly learning and relying on what you already know is probably, you know, you probably know more than you think you know. Um, because security moves fast. You're in the industry, you're being pulled along by it anyway. Um, you know, new technology, cloud is very complex and getting more complex. But if you're in it, you're gonna do you're gonna go a long way. But certainly Twitter is a good place to start. And then you can move off then in different directions. Fantastic advice. And for anyone listening, wanting to find out more information about the work that you're doing, keep up to speed with the latest announcements or maybe even contact your team. What's the best starting point for everything? Oh, um, trustwave.com. We're all on there. Um, there's all the links that you need. We've got a really good blog. Um, the team do a huge amount of work in terms of latest threats, latest vulnerabilities, um, a lot of research. The Spider Labs blog is very popular, so I definitely recommend people have a look at that. And you'll see my face. <laughs> well, I'll add links to that so people can find that nice and easily. So much we covered today. In fact, I think in over 2,400 interviews, I've never talked about rockets, submarines, and a Bollywood movie and the C-suite, but we've done it. But more than anything, just a big thank you for coming on here and sharing your story today. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Once again, huge thank you to Ed from Trustwave and joining, for joining us on the podcast today. I think we navigated the cyber universe Understanding the critical role of effective communication in conveying cybersecurity risks and solutions within an organisation. And that is paramount. And I think today's discussion also underlined the importance of breaking down technical risks into digestible language, regular updates, aligning security measures with business metrics. It sounds so simple, doesn't it, when I say that out loud? But very often people get lost in the language, get lost in the technology. And it's that communication and collaboration. That is where the magic happens. And I think we also highlighted today how cybersecurity is not merely a cost. It is an enabler for businesses. And emphasising the role of the C-suite and aligning their security strategies with the organisation's risk tolerance, again, incredibly important. And finally, remember, staying updated on the latest trends, continuously learning is our key to achieving resilience in this ever-evolving cybersecurity landscape. So don't forget, check out the insightful work by Ed's team, especially their blog with regular updates on the latest threats and vulnerabilities. And if you've got anything you'd like to add, whether it be a comment, whether it be your experience, an insight, advice, or just a question, or you want to come on the podcast, whatever it is, just email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com. If you want to slide into the DMs on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Instagram, it's just at Neil C. Hughes. So thank you for joining me on this journey through cybersecurity today. Stay safe, stay informed, but more than anything, thank you for tuning in to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Don't be a stranger.